Hey everyone, it's Sam Mackay from Enterprise DNA here. Today I want to go over the intersect function. So I want to run a short tutorial here and give you a really good overview of what intersect does and run through an example. So the best way to learn it you know, is a, in, a, in a practical sense how you would actually utilize it. Now, what I wanted to do, and uh, this, is, this is the scenario we're going to work through today, is we're going to work out uh, based on our customers. So who of our customers have bought off us in this month and they also bought off us last month. So how many customers bought two months in a row? So what I've done is I've set up some filters on the left hand side here. So you see here we can select any particular month and year. And then I've got my customer name here and I want to work out through a formula who has purchased and I've got it actually input here. I've actually calculated these two things, but who, who has actually purchased in this month and in the last month? And that's what this calculation is doing. So total sales is very simple. It's just a sum hex. I've showcased this many times. This is just counting up the sales table. And then sales last month is a simple total sales uh, branching out into uh, a time intelligence calculation using data, just jumping back one month. Now the initial context is key here, right? Okay, so what this is, we are enabling a calculation of last month by using this formula in this context because we are selected on a particular month in here. These formulas would probably uh, would likely fall over if you selected multiple months or or if you selected no months at all. So the initial context is very very key here, right? But if you get the initial context right and apply the correct formula on top of that, then you're going to be absolutely fine. But how do we, using the intersect function, I feel like this example showcases it very well. How do we, in a dynamic way, work out who are our customers who purchase two months in a row, so this month and last month? And then what I'm also going to do, and you'll see down here, is I want to work out the sales of the of, of the of these two months and what they were for the customers who were, who were repeat customers who actually purchased within each of these months. So there's numerous ways you can apply the intersect uh, function. You can use it outright to actually then count an absolute number, but you can also use it to change the context of a calculation uh, uh, inside of Calculate. So there's two really cool ways you can use it. So let's run through this example here. Okay, so what intersect basically does, let, let's have a look down here. What it does is it, it, it you can input two tables inside it, two virtual tables, okay? And the way to think about it is that we're going to look at the very first table and see or, or keep any items or, or any rows in the first table if they also exist in the second table. So we start with our initial table that we, our initial virtual table, and then we compare it to another virtual table. Now, if a uh, result or e is in each of these tables, so it's in the first one and it's in the second one, then we retain that row, that line item, that row, okay? So in this case, we're, we've, we've got to think customers. So we've got a virtual table of our customers here, then we're also evaluating if they existed in, a, in another virtual table, so in, in the previous month in this example, and if they did, then we retained them, okay? And we retain them in the table. And then what's going to happen in this particular formula is that we're going to end up with a list of customers who purchased this month and who purchased last month, and then we're going to count up those customers. And that's how we're going to know uh, if a particular customer has purchased two months in a row. Now, how do we actually create those virtual tables in this particular example? Well, if we look up here, put them inside of variables, highly recommend variables. They're, I use them all the time. Um, they're a fantastic addition to writing a more complex formula like this. But basically, in this particular um, result, we are creating a virtual table of uh, customer IDs and then in this one we're, we're creating a, a, a virtual table again of our customer IDs nothing changing there but inside of calculate table we are jumping back one month and then looking at the customer set from the prior month instead of the customer set in the current context and then we're putting them inside of intersect running that logic and then we're getting the answer now Here's a really interesting thing about this particular table, right? Is that for every single row, because of the context in here, we're only actually evaluating one customer every single row because the customer is filtered here. It's interesting, right? Very, very interesting. So basically, all we're doing at every single row is we uh, this 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 particular this particular uh, formula here is just evaluating to this particular customer, and this particular formula here is evaluating to this particular customer as well, but nothing is uh, this is evaluating to nothing if there is actually no sales the previous month right so 
that's where that's where this logic actually works within this particular table. And as we go down, you'll see here that this Adam Thompson, this is the first row, uh, this is the first row that actually evaluates to something, and it equals a one, which is what we want um, because uh, it has. We have sales this month, and we have sales last month. So this is actually evaluating to again the customer. Um, so uh, so it's evaluating. Th th this particular one is evaluating to Adam Thompson. This one is, is evaluating to Adam Thompson because there is a result, and then. Uh, this is checking out. It's saying, okay, well, uh, is is this customer? Did this customer purchase this month? Did this customer purchase last month? And then counts up the rows, and it's always going to evaluate to one, or only evaluate to one, right? Because it's only one customer. So some of you may be thinking, well, why do you even need to do this, um, and why even use intersect in this case? Well, there's a very good reason. There's a very very good reason why you need to do so, and it's mainly because you can reuse this calculation across a wide variety of different contexts. And that's where it becomes really, really powerful. And let's have a look at this one over here. This is exactly the same formula, right? But we're starting in a different initial context, okay? And so instead of evaluating, these evaluating to only say one for every single row here, well, this could evaluate to many because we have a different, a far different context. We have our state code in this case. So the state code is prov providing the initial context and then we're creating a list of customers who purchased in June 2016. Then we're also creating a list of customers that, that purchased in May 2016. And then we're comparing those, those two customer sets and we're saying, okay, well, if there was a customer who purchased, um, who purchased once uh, in a particular uh, state uh, in, in the current month and they also in, in, in a particular state purchased the previous month then those are that's going to evaluate to true for those particular customer sets and then we're going to count the rows up there and you'll see here and this is the same in this visualization you'll see here that this is how many customers in each different state have purchased two months in a row and you could change the context again you could change it to um, anything in your model however you set up your model if the, if the filters are working correctly you can then reapply this formula uh, to 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 other situations so that's why this is a really powerful formula to um, to incorporate instead of writing just if statements you can use utilize um, these uh, this inset pattern um, uh, inside your formula it's really really powerful stuff now the last thing i want to show you is this particular result here. Now this particular result here is counting up the sales. You'll see here that the sales are actually um, being derived and I'm calculating up both this month and last month, right? And you'll see here, I'll, I'll open up the formula, you'll see here that the, I guess, pattern is exactly the same. There's actually nothing different at all. The only difference is instead of count rows, I've evaluated this and I've used intersect inside of calculate to change the context of the calculation. So you can apply this intersect table function in a number of different ways, and that's the key thing key thing to know. Now I do want to show you one last thing, which I think is quite cool, how you can take this even further, okay? Is I've calculated, I have calculated here customers three months in a row, right? Three months in a row. And I've, I've all I've done is I've added a different variable here, down here, and you'll see here that this is actually jumping back two months instead of one month and then I've done an intersect inside of an intersect right and so I've evaluated first of all the initial logic we were doing but then I also wanted to check out check off those customers who also purchased an, another month prior to last month and I put intersect I've layered intersect over that again and so if we jump back here you'll see here they actually have this broken down so we can see what's what's right and what's wrong um, and then I'm going to drag my customer three months in a row and you'll see here that down the bottom you'll see 45, which is the, the total answer. And then you'll see here that this is evaluating um, to yes when there is a customer who has purchased three months in a row. And we can go down and we can see how it goes over and over and over and over again. So there we have it. That is all I wanted to show today. This is a, this is a bit of an intro into the intersect, how you could use it. There's lots of other ways you could use it. But this is just one way, I think, a good way to showcase what intersect actually does. So I'm hoping that you can find a way to apply it. Um, I'm sure you can. There's uh, the, the concept of virtual tables and how you wrap these into table functions is just such a powerful, I mean, the, the expansion in terms of your analytical possibilities goes through the roof if you can start um, utilizing intersect and a variety of other table functions, including calculate table, which I, I showcased uh, in this particular example as well.
Okay, I'm going to wrap it up there. All the best. Hopefully, um, you can utilize these techniques or, or find some way to utilize it. If you like the content, throw the video a like. Really appreciate it. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to Enterprise Tech DNA TV. It's lots of content uh, coming out on Power BI and really want uh, to get that to you as soon as possible. All the best.